Good morning. Stan Stahl here with Secure the Village. Welcome to our webinar. This month, we'll be talking about securing the human. It's our second Secure the Human episode. This time, we'll be talking about the idea beyond awareness training. We've got to really get to turn people into cyber guardians. What's that look like? That's going to be the discussion that uh, I'll have with our expert panel is uh, over the next hour. So first, uh, who's br bringing you this webinar? And uh, as always, it's Citadel, my company. We also have the Axis Group. Uh, you'll hear from Bill Leiter, managing partner of the Axis Group, in just a couple of moments. And uh, BAW Consulting Services, you're, you'll hear from Barbara Allen Watkins as well in, in, in just a few moments. So we're, first of all, very grateful to uh, all three companies for supporting these webinars, this webinar. and. Uh, as I said, my guests this month are Bill, Bill Leiters, managing partner of the Axis Group, Barbara Allen Watkins, president of BAW Consulting Services, and my business partner, uh, co-founder of Citadel with me 17 years ago, Kimberly Pease. So, uh, Bill, you want to start by saying a few words about who you are and kind of what you do and the, what the Axis Group is about? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, the Axis Group is a consulting advisory um, entity and we're focused on leadership transformation. We've developed a model which we'll be talking about a little bit later on called the balanced organization. Um, and again, we'll talk about that in a little while, but it contains six elements that are all working together that can help you uh, promote and make cybersecurity a living reality. Perfect. We're looking forward to that discussion, Bill. Barbara? And Barbara Allen Watkins, uh, president of BAW Consulting. And the main role of BAW Consulting is to educate the public and private sector on cyber fraud awareness and cybersecurity uh, measures that they need to take in order to secure their own village. Barbara Allen Watkins, uh, president of BAW Consulting, we're also doing credit management. We're assisting folks with identity theft prevention, credit management, how to manage your credit profile, and all those wonderful things that um, you know we all need to be made aware of. Absolutely. Now, thank you, Barbara. We're grateful to have you on our on our program today, Kimmy. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And good morning, everybody, and thank you to Secure the Village for uh, hosting today's event. And uh, as Stan mentioned, we are going 17 years strong here at Citadel Information Group, and we provide um, Citadel assessments and awareness training like Barbara. And um, we we work with our leaders and, and in, the, in the L.A. community and across the United States um, just to s begin managing um, diligently and intentionally managing uh, information security and securing um, individuals and employees and practices and policies and procedures. So thanks again. Great, great. Happy to have all of you here. We're going to really have what I, I hopeful of, I'm, I'm confident of, will be a really invigorating discussion. I want to start it uh, with a slide, and, and Bill said this is a cartoon that only a mathematician would enjoy or would appreciate, but I, I don't think so. I, I think it's actually deeper than that. It's a, it's a slide from The New Yorker from 50 years ago, uh, back when both Bill and I had hair. Uh, the idea being, that, you know, we've got this here, you know, we, we got these two physicists, these two scientists across the uh, uh, the blackboard, if you will, and there's all these equations with a step, and there's a, then a miracle occurs, and one scientist is saying to the other, I think you need to be a little more explicit here, step two. Well, it's easy to talk about cybersecurity, creating cyber guardians, creating a culture of security. It's really difficult to do it. We really need to be more explicit. And that's the purpose of today's today's broadcast. Uh, let me just uh, go on to away from the the science, the mathematics, back to ordinary English. Um, these are the key challenges for the leadership team that we want to uh, talk about today. Uh, as as Bill, you're going to fill us in, but the word demand is underlined for a specific reason here. Uh, from Bill's perspective, you've got to demand that the C-suite must demand culture change. The leadership team itself has challenges that it's got to lead up 
to this executives. It's got to lead down to to change behaviors. It's got to lead sideways to influence peers. And it's got to lead IT as well so that IT is following appropriate security management practices. Um, Bill, you want to jump in and say a few words about why the word demand is underlined on this slide? <clears throat> sure. We often use the word commitment uh, loosely. And uh, there's no such thing as a semi-commitment or a sort of commitment or a part-time commitment. Um, com commitment in, in my parlance and in what we um, preach and teach at Axes is that commitment says, we're going to get this done no matter what. Nothing on heaven and earth can stop us. Commitments <laughs> typically have um, delivery dates. Uh, accountability, a commitment in the uh, a commitment in the absence of holding people accountable is worthless. Um, commitment is a strong word, and it's the only word that is successful in bringing about meaningful and lasting cultural change. So it's not enough to have discussions; you have to have commitments. Very well said, Barbara. Go ahead. Yeah. If I could add to that, Bill, I think commitment also holds folks accountable for the commitment, and it moves the organization forward. It keeps moving the organization forward towards a common goal of cybersecurity, which is an integral part of any organization, no matter what size you are. It's an integral part of your day-to-day. -day. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Kim? What are your thoughts? It's, just, it's it's the it's the most um, identified or frequent challenge that Citadel has that Stan and I have when we talk to executives is why do we need this? Usually the executives think it's the IT person's job. It's not the executive's job, and the executives don't want to manage it because they don't understand geek. They don't understand technology. They a lot of times don't understand um, the words or the terms that the technology folks uh, are are sharing any more than technology people understand business terminology. So there's there's a communication gap there, um, and there's a lot of myths surrounding information security and cybersecurity. And and so I think that this topic today is just so uh, important to share with the executives. So towards that, Bill, how do you in how do the people in the middle the leadership team i mean the, the first the second bullet on this slide leading up organize and lead a campaign to get the c-suite to demand culture change how, how you know you're in the middle of the organization your boss says jump you're used to saying how high and now you got to go to the boss and say dude we need you to jump how do you do that with great difficulty uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> Um, all right, so let, let me lay out really, there's, really? No one, there's no one, you know, follow this 10 step check to success approach to this. Um, every organization has its own uh, unique cultural uh, nuances, uh, and, and we have to be mindful of that. Now, here, but here's, here's the goal a leadership team can organize, have great discussions. But in the absence of a commitment, in the absence of a demand, the C-suite, you're leading by influence only. And you have to be really good at being persuasive and compelling and offering uh, benefits uh, in order to make your, in, in order to turn influence into action. So I would, I would pose the question to everybody listening. Uh, ask yourself this question, what would it take to get our CEO to demand cultural change. Because that gives people throughout the organization the mandate, the authority, the mantle to implement and execute change. So you have to, and every organization has its own answer to what would it take. Um, you know, unretouched photos of a vacation and threatening to go public with that could be could be a good influencer, uh, but usually not. Um, so 
there's an upside and a downside. The upside is having a cybersecurity culture and organization um, offers certain advantages in the marketplace. You have uh, advantages that can be used with your vendors, with your customers, and you can feel more secure while many of your competitors are exposed, which leads to the downside cost of exposure and the cost of an event. So frame your message around what are the advantages for having it, what are the disadvantages and the, and the costs, potential costs of not having it. And like most issues of this magnitude, you know, there's a lot of people that feel that, well, uh, cyber crime is something that happens a lot, but it will never happen to us. It happens to everybody but us. People feel the same way about drinking and driving, texting and driving. Um, every every ill in society is something that happens to other people until it happens to you. So what would it take to make that threat imminent? To make that, that and a response to that imminency um, imperative that it be done today and not wait to uh, try to correct something after it's happened because Stan and Kimberly, you know the statistics better than anybody on business failures from people uh, with companies that have been hacked, um, infiltrated, and what happens to their businesses. Maybe you want to say a word about the downside to give some teeth to this. Kim, you want to do Barbara? Here's what we see, and, and it's really unfortunate and quite heartbreaking for us when we get these calls. Um, you know, I remember a, a woman from an advertising company calling me and saying, in tears, never met her, never talked to her before, saying that I clicked on a link um, which transferred not only W-2s to the bad guy who I thought was the CEO, um, and and the, uh, the flip side of that is I'll go in and we'll talk to these leaders and executives and they think it's too much money to spend. It's too much money to spend. And yet, you know, a year later, they'll call us because they had an incident and they're throwing money at us. So it, it's like, you know, Stan, you've used the example. Uh, and I know, Barbara, you've heard this before, but, it, it, you know, you think everything's fine until you find out you have cancer or a serious ailment and then you will do anything to address it. It's unfortunate to Bill's point that we're human. We, we just, we don't see um, the big train coming at us until it's too late uh, or, or after an incident. And that's when people realize. I was in a, a law firm yesterday with the managing partner um, and we were talking about what these new phishing emails look like. And all they start with is, are you in the office today? It looks like an executive sends an email to an, a, a an underling or you know someone else within the firm and it just starts with are you in the office today and prior to my conversation with this managing partner yesterday she said to me I, I never looked at it in any other way other than it was an email asking me if I was in the office today so to get people to switch something in their brains is imperative and we've got to find out what's in their heads, within the executives' heads. What is it that you are most afraid of, but understand that there are solutions and then there are, uh, um, to Bill's point, um, opportunities and, and unexpected be benefits if you address this um, company-wide. Yeah, I think from a total organization standpoint, when we get to one of the other slides, Bill, your mic just went out. Bill, your mic just went out. My mic went out? Now it's back. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So repeat what you said, and then I want to hear from Barbara. Well, I, what I said was uh, we're, we're going to discuss a, this in a bit more detail when we get to the one the next slides yeah. where we talk about what, what a balanced organization looks like and what the benefits are of having of having one. Absolutely. So, Barbara, just pick up the, the thread, if you will. This whole right. idea of fears and opportunities and dangers. and right. I'm going to go back to, to the bullet point two on this slide as lead up. So when you can't get a commitment 
immediately from your executive management team, you have to use your influence within the entire organization to put together statistics on what's happening in this space. You have to have that executive see what is in this for me and what is in this for my company. A lot of times, because of the way statistics are showing, you know, 65% of companies don't have a cyber incident response plan. Those of you on the phone, think about that. Do you really have a plan? Have you performed tabletop exercises to see how valid that plan is? So just with that, you could gain, Mr. C-Suite Executive, a huge competitive advantage over your industry peers by adopting a culture of cybersecurity. So I think we have to play on the emotions of the C-suite and as middle managers, before we get to that C-suite, we have to also show our own commitment to make things happen with change in culture. Take on that project, lead that project, lead down. When we say lead down, you wanna lead really across the entire organization. Lead down to a, a step below yourself, Lead sideways, lead with your peers, influence your peers. And again, IT. But is IT, what encompasses IT? And this is where, Kimberly, I would say a lot of companies consider IT to be IT security, especially the smaller ones. The larger companies realize that they need to separate IT security from IT. Can you comment on that, Kimberly? Um, the, the, the challenge is that... You know, I was a CIO 20 years ago, and I thought it was my responsibility. I thought it was my responsibility to make sure that everything was secure and that all the backups were um, uh, in place and, you know, all the keypads of the perimeter of the building. That was all my, you know, was in my realm and in my initiative. Um, and I remember the owner coming to me and saying, are we secure? And I remember saying, yes, of course we're secure. We have antivirus. We have backups. We have firewalls. And now here I am 20 years later and he should have been coming to me and saying, what are you doing on the technology side? But he also should have had a security committee that was leading down into different departments. It wasn't just an IT. So you're absolutely right. Is And, and the other challenge is these IT uh, folks, and sometimes they're just one person. So for any IT folks on the phone, is it really truly your responsibility? Is it your responsibility to make sure that uh, an attorney or a managing partner who makes $700, $800, $900 an hour puts a passcode on their cell phone? Are you really going to be responsible to hold that person um, responsible to, to, to have good behaviors? So mm -hmm. it, it's tough when the IT folks think it's their job to be to make this whole company secure, and most people do. Bill, any final thoughts on this slide before we move it on? Uh, no, uh, no, I'm good. Okay, good. Barbara? No, I don't, I don't have any final thoughts. I think these are some of the, probably yeah. the key takeaways from this. As Ab to what absolutely. What needs to be done yeah. to change the culture. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, certainly this, this, this in some sense phrases the challenge. It's the, you know, the being more explicit here in step two begins to look like that. Barbara, your camera just went out. Looks like it's coming back. Uh, but while we're doing that, let's go on to, uh, Bill, your, your six elements of a balanced organization. Uh, and part of what I like about this, you and I have talked about this for uh, a couple of years now as, as you've uh, you know, as as it's been developed, et cetera. And part of what I like about this is that it, it touches a lot of different pieces, but it integrates them together in a really, really, I think, creative and beautiful way. So why don't you uh, take us through this and how it applies to cybersecurity, most specifically? Okay, sure. <clears throat> Can everybody hear me all right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes, yes. So these are the six elements that that create balance or imbalance in an organization. Vision, yes. values, values-driven leadership, which is the art and methodology of holding people account measurably accountable for living your values. And the absence of that um, 
values become a suggestion. It's really difficult to hold somebody accountable for a suggestion. Culture, basically how and why we do what we do. Strategies and your greater purpose, how you impact the world beyond money. So let's talk about culture for a moment. How and why we do what we do. This is a buildup of tradition, of habits that have been learned over years. Much of culture is unwritten. Um, people who follow the lead, follow the herd tend to be in everybody else's good graces. Those who are rebels tend to either self-select out or just, just don't fit in. So cultural change or cultural adaptation is something that can only be driven by commitment. In the absence of that, cultures become much like um, herds of animals, zebras, um, wildebeest in, in Africa. They're going to be, some of them are going to be killed and eaten by predators. They know that. They instinctively know that. The herd guards against it. But they don't change their behavior. They accept the fact that some of them are going to be killed and eaten. A corporate culture can't operate that way. A corporate culture has to be more responsive, um, more predictive, more agile, and more adaptable. So all of these elements work together because as the culture goes, um, your ability to implement strategies that are not aligned with your culture are diminished and you're not going to be as successful as you would otherwise be. If your culture is out of sync with your values or vice versa, um, you're going to have constant conflict and politics in the organization and your values are going to come to become are going to become less meaningful to the point where they don't matter at all. When you have an organization like that, a clear vision is impossible. Greater purpose is something nobody even thinks about. You can exist, you can be profitable, you can even grow to a certain extent, but it's a struggle and you're never going to be as successful. You're never going to realize your full potential as you would if you had a well-balanced organization. So relating that to how this comes to look at cybersecurity, one way to look at cybersecurity, the creation of a cyber secure environment that might appeal to other elements of the organization, particularly those in the C-suite, is to look at the creation of a cyber secure environment or culture the same way you would look at a new product development process where you have a commitment to introduce that product. And that commitment drives behavior, it drives training, it drives adaptation, it drives cultural change and adaptation. And if it's done well and done right and your product is right, you'll be successful in the marketplace. I think cybersecurity is not a whole lot different than that. And maybe it's not different at all. So if you could frame your what would it take challenge in the form of, guys, this is no different than developing a new product. What are the advantages of that new product? Well, we have insulation from the destructive forces that could otherwise cripple us or our competitors. And that gives us the freedom, um, both from a, a resource standpoint and a human and capital resource standpoint and a creative standpoint to implement bolder and better strategies. It gives us a chance to grow in our marketplace, to dominate our marketplace, and to sustain that success. We're not subject to the same uh, natural disasters, or in this case, unnatural disasters, uh, human disasters, that could affect us um, if we were to suffer uh, a cyber event. So looking at this through the eyes of a new product could be a way to make the business case in a compelling way that enables people to see this in a way that says, wow, this isn't so different at all. We can do this. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to jump in? Go yeah, ahead. I have I have some comments. I have some comments on 
the elements of a balanced organization. I think this is so relevant, especially to today's environment. You know, cyber breaches are now the new norm. So when you look at changing the culture of your organization so that you become more cyber aware, more cyber secure, then your greater purpose can be realized. Your vision can be realized. Your values can be realized. You're not worried about a major disruption because you did not practice proper cyber hygiene, nor did you have cyber guardians in your organization to help you protect that organization. We can tell by cyber incident responses which companies have a good balanced organization. We know Target did not. They're still being talked about to this day. Did Anthem yep. Blue Cross have a balance? Anthem yep. Blue Cross was in the news for two weeks. The only thing about Anthem is they didn't clean up their databases. I hadn't been with them for 20 years, but I got a letter and I got some sort of credit protection that cost them, you know, a, a pretty penny when you look at it on an aggregate basis of all the people that they had to do that for. Had they only practiced proper cyber hygiene and been totally balanced, then they could have saved some money. And saving money when you have a cyber incident is, it, it impacts the bottom line. And I think the C-suite, when we start talking about the culture and changing that culture, they understand profits and loss and what can happen as a result of not really championing the balanced organization and change in culture. Yeah. Kim, what would you say about that? Um, the new kind of buzzwords that we're talking about in our industry is cyber resilience. Um, you know, on the flip side, you can do everything right and you can still get hit, right? One of our law firms here in Los Angeles, uh, who's a client, been a client for a number of years and they're, they're doing phenomenal um, and they're managing it from the top and they're conducting or going through, um, I think it's Capital One is the bank that there's clients and they're going through that process um, and they still got hit, but they were in a much better position legally, technically, and culturally to respond to that incident. Um, also financially, I would probably add. I'm oh, sorry? Yes. And financially. Financially, right. Financially. Mm -hmm. And their IT provider, who was an outside IT provider, was also in those discussions over the prior years, so they knew their role. And we also had an outside forensic investigator and we called that person, that company in, and he was in a better position. We were all positioned to defend this law firm and its vision and its culture and its purpose. Um, that doesn't mean that people weren't emotional and that doesn't mean that people you know, were surprised and um, you know, the person that clicked on the link, so to speak, that brought them down this road um, still was embarrassed and you know especially when somebody came to them and said it was it was you that clicked on the link so it it's being cyber resilient and the new another new term is cyber defendable so um you know we've got new california privacy laws coming into play and we want to be able to defend our practices relative to security which again supports the vision and the values and the culture and the, our greater purpose Mm -hmm. If I could, if I could add uh, just a couple more things. First of all, from a personal standpoint, to those who are leading these initiatives, the ability to do something like this, to create awareness, to uh, get commitment, to lead in the development of the, cult the kind of cultural change that leads to a cyber secure environment, is a mark of strong personal leadership. The people who do this are, are going to get really uh, high marks in terms of their value to the corporation, their value in the marketplace, um, their, their position in the corporate ladder, compensation, all the things that go along with these kinds of successes. And to Kimberly's point, when you talk about cyber resilience, I'm also involved and I also lecture in leadership in um, 
counterterrorism. Um, and there we have two camps, uh, pre-bang and post-bang. Um, and uh, pre-bang is all the preventive measures. And post-bang is exactly what you talked about, Kim, your ability to respond. Because while people are more protected, nobody can be 100% protected. And so the ability to be resilient and have rapid, efficient, cost-effective response is critical to a cyber secure environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to jump in here with my own favorite poster child, if you will, that, that to me illustrates just when these elements are out of alignment from a security perspective, just how bad things can get. And I'm speaking specifically of Equifax uh, and they're just really horrific the breach they suffered that put all of our information at at further risk if you will uh, anybody who looked at the equifax website or the website of the equifax board of directors it was real clear equifax's vision was we have all this data let's go make money on it their greater purpose was what's our how do we increase shareholder values how do we make more money their strategy was around how do we take the information we have and find new opportunities to make money on it, to monetize it? Uh, I can't speak to their values, but the leadership that, the values that leadership was driving, separate from the values that they may have paid lip service to, oh, we care about privacy, but the real values were how do we make money? Where does that lead to the culture of insecurity where they had i mean th this was not a difficult breach to pull off for equifax that the, that that opening into their network was sitting there wide open and unprotected and not just the one that they got into the bad guys got into but after the incident happened a lot of other stories surfaced of other weaknesses in the organization security weaknesses and other uh and, and, and people calling to management's attention, the poor security practices and management ignored them because they weren't consistent with the greater purpose, the vision and the values that leadership was driving, which was all around money return on investment. Stan, to that point, um, the only values that matter, the only values that are real are the ones that are lived. The, yes. ones on, the ones on the wall plaque don't mean anything. Um, in the case of Equifax, you do know what their values are. Greed, money, and power. Mm -hmm. that, when, when, you're, when you're in that mode, most, of, if not all, of your thinking is going to be about short-term gain and the maximization of short-term. So for all of you listening, one of the elements in, in your what-would-it-take scenario could be the necessity to think long term. Every good management does that. If you're not thinking long term, most of this is going to be pretty unappealing. If you're not thinking sustainability, most of this is going to be pretty unappealing. Um, so I, I would urge you to focus on understanding what your organization's real values are. Because Very that that allows you to put the you are here dot on the map. And it tells you, it informs you of how to message, how to build your business case for driving cybersecurity through your organization. Yeah, yeah, so very, very true. Before we leave this slide, Kim, Barbara, any final thoughts? I, I have one comment. I have one, one probably last comment, and that is, Bill, I totally agree that more companies need to have longer term strategies and longer term um, visions in place, especially when it comes to cybersecurity, because I really do think why be forced into having a culture of cybersecurity when regulatory requirements for certain industries in the future will require it, some even before they fund your company, before they do business with you, they're going to ask. They're already yeah. starting to ask. Yeah. What is your cyber incident response plan? Yeah. That's down from high net worth individuals to contractors, 
folks are really taking this seriously outside of your organization. And if you're not ready, especially, you know, short term, long term, long term, especially, mm-hmm. then I don't know how you're going to be able to survive, you know, as That's a right. company. There, there are there are a lot of pressures on long term versus short term. I've been the CEO of public companies. Um, the pressure, the, the 90 day bubbles that we lived in and the pressure from Wall Street can sometimes yeah. feel overpowering. Um, it's a challenge. It, it's not something that we can just give lip service to and assume it into, into action. But the challenge can be met. And that's the challenge that we all face. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if, it's, it's not easy. I mean, but it's essential and it's something we got to do. Let's move on to the next slide. This has been from the top. Now, the other piece is what's it look like in the trenches? Okay. I mean, this again, this is our, where we got to be explicit between step one and step two, back to the cartoon. This now gets us down in the trenches. There's a lot on this slide. I want to spend the next chunk of time just talking through this. How do we keep cybersecurity front of mind? Because if it's not front of mind, is less likely to happen. So, um, Kim, you want to jump in and start this uh, this segment? I think that one of the things that Citadel provides is our assessment. And after we conduct our assessment, which looks at technology and we interview people on what's in their heads and behaviors and you know everything from <clears throat> how long and strong is your password to where do you store this information and how do you label it and how does somebody know that it's, it's supposed to be protected? Um, it, it more uh, confidential than maybe other types of information. So after we conduct the assessment, that's usually when all of this takes place because we've, we've, we were able during our assessment to start generating interest and get people talking, um, you know, especially uh, to Barbara's point about an incident response plan, especially when an incident happens, that's when the leadership gets involved because the incident happened and there was some sort of um, uh, downtime or some impact on the business, that's when we get leadership's attention. And when we get their attention and we have the opportunity to sit down with them, um, maybe not for a long time at the beginning, but little little conversations and little workshops and little discussions um, that's when people's minds begin to open. That's when people, when they start seeing the executives have these conversations and concerns, that's when the real the miracle does happen, but that's when the real discussions take place. And we're I constantly, when I'm in these discussions, especially if there's an IT person in the room, taking that discussion out of a technical discussion and making about a risk discussion and making about we need you as a managing partner or CEO or you know the ISM, which is an information security manager. We need you guys to make these decisions and have it come from the top versus having the IT people say you need to change your password. So all of these things that you see on the screen, and, and this is just a short list of having these discussions, whether you want them to be a formal department meeting, whether you have a standing meeting and you just make security as a, a line item agenda, um, certainly um, phishing defense training. It's an ongoing discussion. Information security isn't necessarily just about technology. It's about the conversation, as we like to say. It's keeping this front of mind and connecting the dots um, for all involved, the leadership, the middle management, and IT, connecting the dots between their behaviors, their habits, their policies and procedures, and building a um, to Bill's point, a cyber adaptive culture. I, I agree with everything Kimberly said. I think it's it's such a breath of fresh air when you know that your executive committee they meet once a month, once every other month, and cybersecurity is on the agenda at every meeting. Also, I think if you don't have that commitment, if anyone on the on the telephone or on this webinar doesn't have the commitment, assume the commitment. You can do these things on your own as far as your own departmental meetings and then convince your peers to include these things, these discussions in their departmental meetings. And eventually, I do truly believe that it will permeate throughout the entire company and 
help influence the executive team to adopt this culture. But something as simple as a lunch and learn. I mean, I find a lot of companies are doing quick lunch and learn, you know, 45 minutes to just discuss a, a relevant topic to their industry. Create the culture of if you see something, say something. Put the tools in place so that if something comes across someone's computer, they can just click on a, a fish in their uh, toolbar line and it immediately goes to information security. There are so many things you can do that don't require a lot of budget dollars to keep this in the front of mind. One of the things I um, think is, is wonderful, everybody likes rewards. So when somebody does recognize something and say something, see something and say something, offer a reward for that. Celebrate that win uh, throughout the company. No, no matter how small the company is, these things can be accomplished. Bill, what do you think? Yes, absolutely. Um, little things matter. And little things have a way of being effect. So, yes. Uh, Bill, your audio is breaking up again. So try better? that again. Yeah. Better? Okay. Um, so one, one other question I have for Kimberly and Stan, when something does happen, when an event happens, uh, and the company, it happened because the company was unprotected. Um, is the, what, what are the, what are the emotional responses from the senior leaders? Is it anger or is it an oh shit moment? I knew we should have done something. Why didn't I do it? It's all of the above. Um, but there's, there's anger because okay, so typically it, it's, it's a, it can be not typically, but it can be a middle uh, management person who makes the mistake and it's the executives that say, why did you think that was an email from me? Why would you possibly think that way? And yeah. so there's anger at the C-suite level. And of course there's embarrassment and, you know, just a, a lot of emotion in, in these incidents. As I said, I got a phone call from a woman who was crying and said, I'm a smart woman. And I know that these types of emails are out there but it really looked real. It looked, the email looked like it was from the owner. Yeah. So, you know, I remember one time I was in a, in a, a small organization and I provided three training classes in one day and the executive, the owner came in every single one of those classes. The first one, he stayed the entire class, but then the second and third, he just showed up and he said to all of his employees, I will never, send you an email asking you to transfer money. And I will never make it urgent via email because if it is urgent, he said, I'm going to get off my butt and I'm going to come to the right person and ask you to, you know, do the, do the response, or I'm going to pick up the phone if I'm out of the office and I'm going to call the CFO and the CFO will make my request happen. Um, he empowered all of his employees um, a safe way to come and say and question, Hey, look, I got this email. Um, is it really from you? He empowered his employees to say, okay, well, even if there's emotion in the email, I'm not going to believe it because he told me face to face in training that he's not going to do that. And that's the empowerment I think is also what's missing from the C level. Right. So that's important so that even on a personal level, when you talk to your families about cybersecurity, um, your children, your grandchildren, you know, empower them to know what you will and will not do. Mm -hmm. Empower them to know where you're traveling to and, and what's going on in your life because the fraudsters are now virtual kidnappings and, and all sorts of things on a personal level that mm -hmm. if you're not aware of, your grandparents have sent money and you're sitting at home. So I agree with that. Empower your family. Empower your employees. Mm -hmm. So you were going to say something? Um, yes, uh, something a little different uh, on on the business case. You usually do, Bill. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, on, the business, on the business, on the business, on the making your business case, the what would it take side of uh, the uh, discussion. Um, I think you can you can possibly, depending on your relationships with uh, CEOs um, have the discussion about, look, 
if something happens, you have two, you have two choices. You're either going to get angry or you're going to have an oh shit moment. I'm telling you right now, if you don't do this, you have no right to be angry. You can have an oh shit moment, but you can't have an angry moment because I'm not going to be a scapegoat for your bad decisions. Oh, that's good. That's good, Bill. Oh, I like that. That's, that's very good. That's very good. Can we quote you as they walk us out the door? I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. I mean, yeah. I've, I've, had, I've, ha I've been on both ends of those conversations, not necessarily with – on, on a range of subjects, well, from strategy to cybersecurity to personnel decisions to all kinds of things. And a good CEO will sit and listen to that and take it to heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's well said. And I think, it, as in so many cases, when the CEO gets angry or when any of us get angry, oftentimes the anger it may expressed to somebody else, but we're really angry with ourselves right. because we didn't see it happening and we well, didn't plan it and do the right yeah. thing. And our, and our egos won't allow us to blame ourselves. So we have correct. to correct. Yeah. So we'll and, blame somebody one else. Of, one yeah. of the perks one of the perks of being a senior executive is you get to fire your mistakes. <laughs> 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 yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. Uh, yeah. A couple of other thoughts on, on this that just just because they haven't been said, the, the posters and login banners, uh, the, the two bullets under that, the sub bullets, continuous reminders and change regularly is the reality that on the one side, they're good because they are continuous reminders. The negative of that is if we see the same thing every day over and over and over again, after a few days, we begin to ignore it. It form, it just becomes part of the background. And that's why I've, we've got the, the bullet here to, ch to change these things regularly, something for the leadership team to do. Uh, the other, having IT provide cybersecurity tools for users, there's some examples of specific ones, and, and we, we've talked about that. But I want to just spend a couple of moments on that this becomes a way to get IT to engage with the people around cybersecurity. So it's it now becomes part of a win-win instead of, oh, IT is forcing us to change our passwords. And I think that's part of the value of this. And I know, Kim, you've done a, so many focus groups uh, with, with our clients. And Barbara, I'm sure you've had the same discussions with, with people you've talked to. Uh, so I'd like to just spend a couple of moments talking about that point. Here's the challenge is that good IT folks, and there's a lot of them out there, they're skilled and they're knowledgeable and, you know, they're experienced. Um, they know the right answer. They know, um, and I'm not talking about they know which password management tool to use. They know that a password management can be a tool to help their organization and their users. Their challenge, and it's not just one, but their, their challenges are, you also have to be good at rolling out these tools. And, and that's where IT folks, as good as they are and as skilled as they are, they don't necessarily have the people, um, interaction, um, personalities to make these tools um, be rolled out efficiently, and most importantly, taking the time to train people, because we all learn at different levels, and we all have generational issues. The millennials learn a little bit faster than the, than the traditionals um, or the, the baby boomers. So I, the IT folks, if they're any on, on, on the phone, think of better ways to roll out these tools and get management's buy-in and C-suite's buy-in to commit, to Bill's word, to giving you the time it takes, especially for the C-suite, to embrace these tools. Because what I see time and time again is, here's a tool, this is how you do it, you push this button, you set your thing, you set your password, this is your master password, and you've got to change all your passwords. It, it doesn't work. It's just throwing more technology at a problem that's just going to make it more frustrated. I have gone into time and time again to client after client and users are frustrated because they have a tool that's rolled out, but the time hasn't been taken to implement it properly, to spend the time in training and follow up from that training and get feedback from the training and the use over time. It, it, IT folks just stumble on that because they want to get it out, um, get it configured, roll it out, and be done with the project. 
tools have to be humanized. Yes, well said. Yes, yeah, Barbara. Yeah, well, very well said. I yeah. you know from from my view, I see um, the IT team really show a need for the proper tools, but then they can't get the funding to get the tools. Especially in a small company, the priorities for a small company could be different than spending money on cybersecurity. But there's always a way. And I think to, the, to my IT folks on the phone, you just have to be tenacious and aggressive in getting what you need to help protect the assets of the company. Don't take no for an answer. Maybe you can't get the Cadillac of the tools. You have to start out with the Pinto. And some, oh, nobody knows what a Pinto is. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's a horse. Everybody knows. Well, I, thought it, I thought it was a kind of bean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to just re relinquish to taking baby steps yeah. to get to the main goal. That's that's another good point. This idea of baby steps, uh, all of this. I mean, it's it, it 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 it's in some sense opposite to commitment, and we got to do it quickly. But it's it's that, again working that proper balance. That's a balance of speed and strategy, et cetera, as 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 we move. Uh, final thoughts on this slide before we. Uh, Kind of Actually, I do have a thought, and it goes back to one of something Bill said about commitment, is that this front of mind to keep it front of mind and needing that commitment is, I think, something that it's not just the IT folks that have to be committed. It it has to come from the top in the leadership. They have to IT folks have to be committed. They also have to learn how to speak a little bit of business because business doesn't speak geek and geek doesn't speak business. So we have to come closer together there. Um, and keeping this conversation going um, on tools and keeping the conversation going about risk and keeping the conversation going about, you know, celebrate wins and ongoing. I get called sometimes into a company and all they want is training. And I say to my prospects or my clients that want just training, you know, as good as I am in training, um, what, me coming up here and talking for one hour out of one year is not going to influence your people. It may influence one or two people, but it's not going to influence the culture. So we have to do all of these things and more, all of these things that are on the on the slide and more to keep that conversation front of mind and going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and one final final point, <laughs> um, Kim. What I what I hear in your message is you have to be very sensitive to and aware of what it takes to get critical mass mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you talk about yeah. taking baby steps you have launched a plan to get to critical mass mm -hmm. and that's different in different situations and different companies yeah so mm -hmm. another thing to keep in mind in building your what would it take what would it take case yeah you know, how do you get to critical mass mm -hmm. final word on this slide barbara Anything? No, I'm, I'm good. I think I, I agree with everything that Kimberly and Bill stated. Okay. I, I just think that it's, it's critical to continue to forge forward. Yes. And don't be deterred. Yes. Especially yes. the middle managers and the IT teams that are on the line. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, moving along then, because we're, we're just about the top of the hour again, uh, one of the things that we know the leadership team has to do is work with IT, two references to that. Uh, we're not going to spend time discussing it because we have discussed it. We have a whole webinar on managing security, the IT infrastructure from the perspective of the leadership team. We did that last October of 2018. We have also built, Secure the Village has built, the code of basic IT security management practices. This provides a floor, if you will, for what IT should be doing, needs to be doing from a cybersecurity management perspective. It's not a set of best practices. It's a set of minimal practices. It's the idea that if you aren't, if you aren't doing these things, there is no way that you have a defendable IT security management program. So I encourage everybody on the webinar 
loop back to the October webinar that's on the Secure the Village website. Look at the code of basic IT security management practices as well. If you're a leadership team, you want to make sure your IT people are doing what's on that code. If you're an IT group, if you're an IT person, you're an IT vendor, you want to make sure that that you're you're doing these things. That that was the October 2018 webinar. So here's a summary, and we're going to spend the last couple of minutes just coming back to this. Uh, the C-suite must demand. The leadership team must lead up, down, sideways, and across the chasm into IT. Um, just any more thoughts on this before I take it home? I'll no. say it again. No. Don't take give up. One of you. Barbara? No, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in just not giving up because this is so very important to all of our livelihoods. Yeah. Don't give up. Never, 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 as Winston never. Churchill said back in 1941. Uh, Kim, Bill? My favorite you. quote out of today is from Bill. If you aren't prepared for an incident, you don't have a right to be angry. <laughs> I love that. Love yeah, that, me too. Me too. Bill? I, thank you all. Is this, uh, I think this was a very productive discussion. Great. Yeah. Thank you. So do I. Thank you. Yeah, I've thank the, all three of you. Um, there's Here's the key resources I want to call your attention to. It's the resource kit. It's, uh, uh, again, on there's there's the link. It's on the Secure the Village website. Just want to call out to everybody. Uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology National Initiative uh, for Cybersecurity Education has put together a wonderful little booklet called Cybersecurity is Everyone's Job. It's available off of the Secure the Village website, uh, the resource kit, or you just go look up NIST, NICE, Cybersecurity, Everyone's Job. You'll get it on a, a Google search. So I want to call your attention to that. This webinar will be online. Uh, certainly by the end of the weekend. It, it takes us a couple of days just to process it and get it up on our website and all, but, but it will be there as well. Uh, our next webinar is April 4th. Uh, it's going to be on the California Consumer Privacy Act. That's a total game changer from our perspective in, in, in cybersecurity, in, in that in part, it not just uh, continues to document that there are legal requirements for information security management that flow out of the Privacy Act in addition to other things that have already been done. But in addition to that, uh, there is now a statutory right of action for people whose information has been breached. And that, that again, is, is, is a game changer. April 4th uh, is going to be the act. We'll talk about it. And I think this is going to be first in a series. We're, we're still talking about this, but I think it's going to be at least three consecutive webinars looking at, 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 the, uh, at, at the next webinar. Uh, this is part of the Secure the Village webinar series. Every month, 10 a.m. Pacific time, we're on. We'll be on again next month. This is what we do. You see this every month if you've been following us. Just to go right past it, I want to leave the last chart up for a little bit because it's got the contact information for my wonderful guests. Uh, also, the link. Please feel free to sign up for the Citadel Cybersecurity News of the Week and our weekend vulnerability report. It's free. We don't spam you. It's just sign up and send it to your people. As it's part of keeping cybersecurity front of mind. With that, um, I want to thank you all for participating. Bill, Barbara, Kimberly, you have made a tremendous, wonderful panel. Uh, I'm grateful to you. Secure the Village is grateful to you. We all can be very thankful that we've got people like you, your commitments there. And we're all very, very grateful for that. Uh, final thoughts, anybody, before we adjourn? I, I hope that uh, our listeners drew some value from this, and it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Nice to see you, Bill and Barbara. You too. It's nice to see all of you guys, and thank, thank you guys for attending uh, this panel discussion. Okay. So, thank you, and with that, uh, we are adjourned. We'll see everybody next month.